That would be K Bong. I would be Jeff Gora. This would be Artist Waves Live. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Monday. It's been uh, it's been a little while. It's been what ten days, I think. Um, I hope everybody's doing all right. I hope everybody is doing all right. I hope you're feeling okay. Hope you're hanging in there. What a what a week, man. What a week. What a week and a half. Um, what a ten days. I hope, you, I hope everyone's hanging in there. I hope everyone's hanging in there. I can tell you that we have the right type of guest uh, for today. We have a person from a band who is all about the unity. We're all about unity. This was scheduled a while ago, a little while ago, but you know, I think all things considered, this worked out really well to have Nick Hexum from 311 on Artist Waves Live today. Um, you know, they have some shows coming up, some, some live stream shows. They have some drive-ins coming up. And man, 311 is all about the unity. And I think this is timing perfectly to talk to, to a group whose mission statement and whose vibe is positive, always positive. And uh, I think it's a, it's a really good and appropriate day for it. So, uh, hey, hey everybody. 311 Nation, 311 Familia, the excitable crew. Uh, I consider myself hopefully in the in that world, I've seen 311 live, I don't even know, upwards of 20 times, 30 times. I'm sure that's nothing compared to, to some of you all. Um, but one of the best live concerts you will ever, you will ever see. That's, let's just put it that way. One of the best live bands, most exciting bands on the planet. And <clears throat> they have some really exciting stuff coming up, which they always seem to do. And they, uh, they will be... They will be uh, live on Wednesday. So Nick Hexum is here. So I'm going to get him in, invite us to join live, and we're going to talk about it all. All right. Hey, Nick. Hey. What's up, man? How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me today. Turning up my volume, getting zoomed in here. Okay. Right on. How you doing, man? I'm doing really good. Uh, it's, it's an exciting week after a, a long hiatus to get back to doing what we do, getting back to rocking. And uh, between the streaming shows and the, the drive-in shows, it's, it's, I can feel that rush of excitement building up. I can too. I really can too, especially like when this week hit this morning and just, it was just a different feeling. And I was talking about it a little bit before we connected about, you know, you guys have always been about the unity, right? I mean, the unity tour has been the name of your tour forever. Unity. Um, it's just synonymous with 311 and to have, to have music or something that is just so uh, exciting and unifying and what you guys are doing kicking off this week it couldn't have timed better, and I think it's going to be so well received in terms of positive vibes, man. Just positive vibes. Yeah, we're all about uniting people and just taking all walks of life and welcoming everybody. And that word unity, um, you know, that was the original name of the band before 311. Me and Tim and Chad had a band called Unity, and um, but there was already a punk rock band named Unity, so we. <laughs> We picked a new name and um but that's just a, such a it's everything that we stand for because um you know the world can do anything when we're when we're united and there's obviously a lot of division right now and just looking for common ground and just bonding through something as uncontroversial as music is it's a great service to be able to provide and you know love is a strong force in the world and it it unites people. Well, we're, we're all lucky and grateful that you guys have, uh, have pioneered that for, for as long and as well as you do. I was thinking about you guys a lot this summer um, because I was thinking about, you know, obviously we didn't get to go see, see you in Incubus this summer, but I was thinking, you know, in a way, if there's a, if there's a positive 
side to this for you. It must have been kind of cool to be home for a summer. What, like the first summer since 1997? Or so we're like the second summer in 30 years? Yeah. Um, you know what I likened it to is um, growing up in Nebraska, we'd have snow days where we thought we were going to school and then we hear on the news that we're not. And all of a sudden you're just like, wow, now we've got to completely plan what we're going to do. Um, and it just, you know, life has other plans for you. So we just made it a really special time at home with our kids um, and just doing different things that catching up on stuff. Um, but then also just to like, you know, camping in the yard and different things that we, you don't find the time to do when, when you're as busy. So it was like a snow day. And I also likened it to be like the show Little House on the Prairie, but because we were just so isolated and we lived kind of out in the outskirts, we were together all the time, except the dad would leave once a week to go get food and supplies. And it was just a very unusual time how different it was from normal life and of course we really missed rocking but you know when when life deals you curves you roll with it make the best of it and we ended up having some really special times at home with the fam that's awesome i'm really i'm, uh, I'm happy to hear that that's uh that's that's some really it sounds like there's some bonding moments i had a similar experience too i mean i have never toured on a summer one summer let alone 30 so um but you know i i can I can certainly relate to a lot of those getting creative within the own, your own acre. Um, and I made this like quarantine playlist in, in the spring and, you know, I had a mix of all different types of things to match because I felt like every day you just kind of feel different and you, you just go with the day. But I had your song use of time on there from transistor because sometimes like a song strikes me for just one lyric, just one line. And, it just made me feel really good to have the lyric confusing use of time just because you know like at the end of the day you'd, you'd be like all right i think i think i i think i made the best of what i had i think you know like some real quality time with my kids i don't i don't really know what the plan was or if i did it right or what the answers to any questions are so i i felt like the confusing use of time thing just really it just grounded me a lot and i you know like i'm, I'm grateful to have a song like that that's simple with the you know the e chord or whatever that was someone to be such a companion <laughs> to me yeah it was a lyric that a lot of people could relate with like yeah am i fine is this what i'm supposed to be doing you know just that's the power of music that combined with a melancholy kind of um acoustic guitar going on there and just sort of like you know am i fine some people have written me letters like you know that to me um, speaks to the inner struggle that I was having. But, um, you know, and, and back to the quarantine thing for a, sec a second, it's been so long since it started that I almost forgot to mention that, you know, me and my kids did these different videos to try and cheer people up of like, you know, Bob Marley and um, and Abba's I Have a Dream with my, my middle daughter seeing it and Here Comes the Sun with my little daughter. So you can see that on my Instagram, but it was like we want to use music to cheer people up right now because it people really need it so you know don't worry about a thing every little thing is going to be all right that message was just so needed at that time so it was fun to do that and they're they're all in my uh instagram if, you, if people want to see it those were awesome i loved those because i loved how you paired it with a certain setting like sometimes you were out in the woods and a hike or whatever it just really was a cool vibe matching with what you were doing thank you um and then I also want to tell you, we have, we have a bit of a mutual friend in Nicole Alvarez, and I was watching you and Peanut uh, on, her, on her interview show the other day. And Peanut was telling a story that I, I, I kind of knew, but I didn't know the details about how um, she asked about your mission to, to always be positive and to, um, you know, kind of exemplify happiness in your life and, and staying happy. Um, and I think he was telling a story about how you kind of brought that to the band early on and saying like, I, I kind of want to do it this way. We don't have to be angry. Um, and it was some really fascinating insight, but I was thinking about it and I was like, you know, even like a song like Stainless Off Voyager where it's like, it has that message, but it doesn't ignore the fact that things are going to be tough. You know, like you're going to yeah. take your licks. Um, and I think that's so helpful for so many fans and so many people that rely on music to hear, you know, pioneers like you guys who do that and, and who make them feel 
a certain way, but then you can easily lose track of the fact that like, okay, well, the artist on the other side, the writer, that's a human being too. Like, you know, they experience the same things that we all may experience and it's not always easy for, it may not always be easy for them too. So I'm, I'm curious from your perspective, and maybe you've had some moments over the past eight, nine months or whatever, what do you do when maybe you're not feeling positive or you're feeling down or you're like, you're in a rut or do you have any sort of like routine or any sort of exercise mentally or musically that you do that gets you out of that space or lets you acknowledge that space to get through it? Yeah, I mean, because our plans were so changed, I realized that I, you know, at some point need to kind of step up on my, my self care with um, doing some guided meditations, um, getting, you know, a good balanced workout that has some cardio and stuff in there just to help my brain reset. You know, I feel like if I just hang out and don't have kind of activities planned that I, that I get really restless and start to be um, just spun out. So um, I've stepped up on my self care, checking in with, with different people, friends that I have, like keeping it a balanced conversation. Let's talk about me. Let's talk about you. Um, you know, people need to relate. And during this time of isolation where like normally I've got my uh, Sunday night basketball game where I'll, you know, do male bonding. Well, now we don't have that. So we got to kind of create different new things to just to feel included um, and, you know, just different self-care things. And you, it's always, it's so easy in this era of technology. There's so many awesome guided meditations on podcasts right now. If you just search, you know, a gratitude meditation or a, um, a self-esteem, any, it's, it's all like right there for free. There's really no reason not to do it. And also the same with workouts. People like, oh, the gym's closed. Get Nike training in TC, get the um, Nike training app. It's all free. It's amazing. I did it this morning. Like you can, you can do stuff to take care of yourself, even though um, the normal things we, we used to do aren't there and you, you got to be flexible. And um, I've, I've needed it more than ever because there is just, there's an inherent isolation uh, that's, that's going on. So I just want, want people to know that they're not alone in those feelings. And, and I feel bad for, Imagine, you know, if you were my kid's age to all of a sudden not get to play with your friends as much. So we have a little play group pod with two other families, so they still get to do that. But before we had instituted that policy, I felt really bad. So I was like trying to be that awesome playmate and dad and do all these different fun activities. But also they just want to tell silly kid jokes on and on and stuff like that. They need kids their age and that kind of physical play. So just got to roll with it. Yeah, right on. I hear you. That's uh, well put. My, I'm saying same, same boat to some degree. Dad jokes only took me so far. And then I'm like, yeah. um, <laughs> how do I how do I write a new one, I guess? Yeah. Uh, and, and it's somebody said to me, it's it's uh, like early on back in the spring that, you know, another positive light is that it's it, a lot of people, it's becoming your full time job to to focus on your own health. And I'm like, you know, that's that's a good that's a good thing. <laughs> that's yeah. a very good thing. Uh, mentally, physically, however, which way you take it. Um, yeah. So cool. But I, I love to see how like people are embracing some of these new ways to receive music, to receive live music, the live streams, the drive-in shows, you know, podcasts, whatever, even things like this. Um, and I heard you talking about, you know, the upcoming live stream shows too. And, I, and I've taken in a few of them, whether it was uh, a specific artist or band or like a virtual festival and stuff. And I love them. I think they're cool. Um, but I never really thought of it as you were talking about, like, for our shows coming up, move your coffee table out of the way, clear out the room, get the right setting, and, like, put yourself mentally in that arena. And I was like, that's a really cool way to do it. Like, I've gotten, you know, I've gotten the beers ready, I've gotten outside by the fire pit, and I've had, the, but I've never put myself like, okay, it's fine to jump up and down, it's fine to crank this loud and act like you're in a show. I think that's a that's going to be a fun, exciting thing for, for me to try because I haven't done that yet. Yeah, no, I think that it, just people can set it up that way. You can have a, a, a Zoom with your other 311 fan friends. And um, part of the image was set in my mind actually by my dentist, who is a big fish head. 
And uh, he, I, last time I saw him, it was in the middle of like the, or the fish had just finished their baker's dozen at Madison Square Garden. He's like, oh yeah, pretty much every night, me and my other fish head friends will get together and smoke and drink and dance around in the living room in front of the TV. I'm like, that is awesome. <laughs> uh, so do that. <laughs> yes, there's some room for creativity to really rock it out in your living room. This can be really fun. Um, so I, I'm excited for it. And I've, I also love the fact that, you know, it starts Wednesday with, with music from the hive. Um, I've always found it fascinating about the, the hive. Like, I feel like there's this deep intrigue about your, your 311 compound to the hive and what you guys, you know, creatively what do there and how it's part of your space. I saw this week, you guys, Peanut had like a little kind of a tour of certain areas of the hive. Um, I guess building upon that, is it possible to do like a little virtual explanation of what's the inside of the hive like? Like what is the atmosphere you're gonna be in? I know you have a control room, probably a lounge, a recording studio room, a live room. Um, what's, what's it like? Yeah, um, that is, it's, it's basically, there's three main areas. Um, we've, we've done a lot of work on it. Um, there's a little office, but basically it's the lounge and the control room and then the live room and then a couple like uh, like a tape room where we have old tape machines that we don't use anymore, but we, we might one day. Um, but really uh, the exciting thing is, is the technology, which um, I can just say that people are going to be uh, pleasantly surprised by some new technology that we use as far as the environments um, that we're going to have. And I've just got to got to give a shout out to our crew that has got some really cool stuff together but yeah the hive we bought it um 20 years ago we had a previous hive that we rented where we did sound system um and then we bought this property and we got it actually from the estate of sherry lewis and lamb chop the the puppet lady yeah. with the curly hair yeah. and um we think that the the hive may be haunted <laughs> because we've heard little weird things um, so we keep a, a little lamb chop puppet there at the studio to just make sure that we respect the, uh, you know, the people that came before us there because she, I guess Sherry Lewis passed away a couple years before and then we bought it from her estate. But it's, it's a cool studio that has, um, you know, I was talking to one of the guys from Devo, Bob Mothersbaugh, and he was like, we recorded an album at your studio. Apparently it was a hotbed of cool um, a new wave of Super Tramp and Adamant and Devo recorded there, maybe Missing Persons. Um, so it's it's cool to have, to acknowledge the history of the building. Oh, that's cool. I didn't necessarily know that. I know there was some other stuff, but uh, I didn't go, I didn't know it went that deep. So yeah, um, awesome. So uh, we're all getting a peek inside the hive uh, before we really go inside the hive on Wednesday. And um, I know you guys recorded everything from, from chaos on there, right? Every record from 2001 on had, was actually done there. Right? Yeah, mostly. I think we did a few drum tracks elsewhere. Um, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm at my studio right now. And so I can engineer myself and, you know, record my own guitars and vocals here. And then we all put it together at the hive so it's been a few different methods but yeah the bulk of the work gets done there um and the word the hive um comes from in 1994 we there was some rap lyric that was like this is the go for self era and and then so we called 94 the go for self era and then in 95 <laughs> it, it's 95 we go for the hive and that so that was just a, like hey we're we're doing this for for our collective good instead of individual it was just sort of like a rallying cry and so it became a song hive it's 95 we go for the hive and then um now when i sing that song i say since 95 we we've gone we go for the hive yeah, yeah. um and then it be, just became the name of our studio because it's just a hive of activity that's so cool that's really that's uh it's cool to have a little 311 home base like that, that uh, really sparks, you know, additional entry. Um, and now you guys, are you doing like a, for the live streams, you're doing a post, uh, excuse me, a pre-show and a post-show. Does that include you guys in, in the band to like doing a Q&A or something? Or is that more for the fans to 
to chat with each other? Um, I, I, I'm kind of just gonna throw and go and see what see what happens. I'm not exactly sure what the, the schedule um, is, but you know, I know it's gonna be awesome. I, I, it's nice to have a crew where we can leave it up to them. Um, we, I think we had talked about doing some different chat things, and I know that each of the streaming shows, since it's the three elevens, they're gonna um, evolve and kind of grow each time. So we'll see. Cool. cool. I'm sure if nothing, I mean, just the fans chatting with each other be uh, would be a kick. Um, yeah. So also, you well starting again starting Wednesday, we got music. The, the album in its in its entirety. Will you guys go in sequence, like from song one to twelve? Is that is that the idea? Yeah. Okay. I mean that's how the album was intended, and the song "Welcome" is a a welcoming. It's it's a, it's yeah. like meant to be an intro song, so um, definitely got to start with that and end with "Fuck the Bullshit" as as the album did. Right on. And will there be um, was there like songs after that? like that you'll play maybe a few others sprinkled in or is it more the the focus to to um to stay with the album each stream it's it's just the album um and then there's going to be some other goodies sprinkled in nice nice well i've always you mentioned welcome i always loved how your your debut well your official debut that music record started with that just you know like gliding intro into come on in it's, you know, it's like, it's the wave you've surfed ever since. Um, so it's really fitting. So that's awesome. Have you ever played these records? I know you've played all the songs given the amount of you guys um, change up the set list, but have you ever done anything just like this where you isolate some records? We did play um, music uh, at a Halloween show in Atlanta years ago. Was it 10 years ago? Something like that. Um, and we've, we've done it a couple of different times where we play a whole album to celebrate, um, including, I guess, all of our first four albums have been played in their entirety. But, um, you know, we keep we keep evolving as musicians. So, um, you know, you never play something exactly the same way twice. So it's yeah. and also we've got a lot of this is going to be a really excellent recording and, and visually it's it's some new technology that we're really excited to to debut nice well i uh, i'm certainly looking forward to it and then the drive-ins too um have you been to a drive-in show yet driving concert i have not i haven't either I, i've watched a few videos of it but i haven't had the opportunity to go to one um i, I mean i like i think it's cool i like the fact that people are embracing these ideas and i know I'm, I'm sure it's a mixture of people that are just want to night out and, and with diehard fans um, but hey, going with the flow, I, I like it. And then there's two sets per night. So that means two different set lists too, right? Yeah, we're gonna cool. mix it up somewhat. Uh, my friend from the band Yachtly Crew did the did one of the drive-in shows out at uh, Ventura. And so I was like, so was it was it good or bad? Was it, He was like, totally recommend it. It's gonna be great. Um, and, you know, I think that nightlife is just, part of it's just it's needed whether it's for just to change up the momentum or have a date night or just to have a release with your friends it's like a essential service so i'm glad to being able to get back into it yeah that's uh i agree it's very you know mentally calibrating so to speak so um cool timing to have you guys stepping into that um obviously this year too was a uh, you know not to, i know you've talked a, a bunch about this but technically the 30th anniversary uh, of, of 311 and you guys playing your first show in Omaha. Um, I'm wondering if you guys had a moment, I know plans changed a bit, but you had a moment within your own band and your crew and management to, um, you know, to have maybe just a cheers to yourselves for a minute, just to, you know, give each other a little hug and say, you know, this year, like any, like any other, we we're coming together and we're still, we're still living in rock. And have you had a moment together yet? Um, you know, I think that we, we always do that to a certain extent, um, that we would just, that we keep gratitude in mind. We're like, look how cool this is that we get to do this. Um, 
you know, so I think there's, that's kind of just part of what we do is to always never, never become jaded to the fact that we get to do this. So it's just kind of always in our um, conversations. Nice. Well, I'm, uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll all get to celebrate in different ways, um, you know, starting, starting Wednesday. Um, do you know, did these live streams sell out? Somebody asked me that because I've seen them done both ways. I don't, I, I think that would be something that people would just do to create an illusion of scarcity. I don't really think, <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's a real thing. <laughs> I don't think so either. Yeah, I've, I've seen certain things done, but not exactly like that. So cool. So come one, come all. Um, so one other question I have for you, and then if it's cool with you, if I mean, we've had a lot of, a lot of nice comments, a lot of people saying some, some pretty sweet things and sending some love. Um, if we take a question or two from those that are, that are joining us here, if you wanna ask uh, a question about Nick or the live streams coming up or the, uh, the drive-in, if you wanna shoot it into a comment, uh, feel free. And, and if Nick has a moment, we'll, we'll be able to pick one or two out. Uh, I, I'm, I'm curious about new music, uh, anything you either personally or as a group, did you, did you take to writing at all the past couple months or recording anything uh, that came your way? Um, I think I'm always putting down little ideas um, into my phone, little voice memo ideas. Um, but I, I've really taken this as a time to um, expand my listening, um, checking out different alternative groups. Um, I really like Tame Impala. I like um, Wallows. There's there's a lot of good alternative out there um, to enjoy. And also just good hip hop, good pop music, um, Latin, you know, Spanish speaking dance hall is just on fire right now. Uh, it's just, it's cool to just keep expanding your, your listening, um, your listening experience and that will keep keep you moving and also just all reviewing the classics like that paul mccartney has so many killer almost beatles quality solo albums that people don't haven't really taken in as much they're, they're like underappreciated so yeah i've just been kind of all over the place yeah, me too. It's been cool to dive into catalogs that you wouldn't necessarily explore the dark corners in or the music that finds you too during this time is, um, it's man, it helps. It, it always helps. Um, so one question we got yeah. for you is that we were talking about, we were talking about Transistor. Um, well, we were talking about use of time. And someone asked, uh, there were some really nice comments about that record and people that have taken to it um, really deeply the past few few weeks or few months, um, if there was something that personally influenced you or inspired you um, about that record, was there an inspiration behind Transistor? Um, well, I think that the band goes through different pendulum swings where on, on the Blue Album, we were in like a tightening, let's tighten it up phase. Let's make the songs high energy and short and you know don't bore us get to the chorus like um and that was really instantly resonant i mean it, it that that was our breakthrough album but then on transistor like let's totally explore let's not worry if it sounds good live right away or not let's just make let's just try out all these different new influences it was a time of getting really into dub um, you know, King Tubby and then trip hop stuff, Massive Attack and different kind of production styles um, that there was this whole like trip hop and acid jazz thing that was going on at the time that I was really into. And so that was influencing me. Um, and then just deciding to make a double album for the price of one. I mean, I loved it when The Clash did that with Sandinista It had three albums and they, they even put like a sticker on there, don't pay more than $9 or whatever, and really pissed off the labels because they wanted to charge, you know, triple price. But, um, you know, we, we, we gave a double album for the price of one, we maxed out how much music you could fit. It was basically a way of saying thank you, that we're gonna, 
give as much music as we can to our fans for the price of a regular CD. Um, and then it was just a time of a lot of experimentation. And honestly, the album was poorly received at first. Uh, everyone was like, what happened to 311? They used to rock. And I'm like, well, there's, there's some rock on there. Um, but yeah, we were, we were just into like, let's, let's take some chances. And, you know, some, we still go through those different kind of phases. And sometimes we're, you know, harmonious about what everybody wants to do and sometimes not, not as much. So you just got to kind of take it as it comes. Yeah, that's uh, cool. Thank you for explaining, uh, you know, the insight behind that. That's uh, I, I, that record's special, man. Well, they all are in their own way. Um, and we got music coming up on, on Wednesday and that one really means, um, that one really means a lot to me in particular. I, I mean, we all have our stories, but Paradise, in particular, is a song that uh, is attached to you. All have, you always have records and groups that mean a lot to you, and then there's songs that are attached to moments. And uh, you know, Paradise for me is a song that's attached to some pretty deep and sentimental and awesome moments, man. So um, I'm I'm really stoked Thank you. to see that one. You know, and uh, one other question we have, and I know you gotta you gotta run, I think, to practice, um, but is we there have been particular practice. Right on. Is there a particular stream or uh, one of these live uh, full album shows that you guys are looking forward to the most in terms of revisiting that record in full? Maybe that time period mentally or some of the songs you haven't played in a while? Um, you know, I'm looking for maybe this one the most just because um, I'm ready for that release and music has so many hard rocking songs where I can just really pour it all out and and rock out so um, it's going to be a very physical experience and um, you know a debut album is always special because it's kind of like a greatest hits of all your best ideas up to that point and that's why sometimes bands go through a sophomore slump because it's like well they had their whole life to write that first album and now they've got a year to follow it up or whatever so um, very much looking forward to Wednesday. Me too, man. I really, I really can't wait. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun, and just to get everyone in the same room, chat room, whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah. And then December eleventh, January eleventh, um, man, kicking off January eleventh with down. Real quick, I first fully got into you guys on the third record. Um, I was Most away. I was well. I knew the songs, but I was too, I was young, and I wasn't all that musically diverse yet. I was not inclined to figure things out on my own. I was highly influenced by my cousin's record collection. And we were away. Nice. And he was in. We're in his little red car, and he pops in that CD, and I hear that opening, that opening riff, and I'm like, "What is this?" And it just blew my mind. But what was cool about that was that I t immediately went backwards. Right? I didn't get stuck on that CD. I immediately went to, to music and I immediately went to grassroots and I discovered Lucky and I discovered the song Grassroots and everything else. Um, so it's going to be cool for me uh, to, you know, personally to, to start from the beginning because I, uh, I, I, like I said, I, I always am associating songs with moments a lot lately. <laughs> so uh, it's going to be Thank you. That's nice to hear that story. Yeah, that, that tone of that guitar i i remember agonizing about should i use it like a regular distortion sound or this one with the with the envelope filter that wah, 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 you know but uh it was this rack mount piece called the ada that was a, a preamp that was actually analog but you could scroll through it had presets so it was like an analog amp in a digital so that was a huge breakthrough for the for the moment and then after you know we kind of moved away from that rack mount stuff for a while but then um, I was like, I got to get that exact sound. And you can't, I cannot get that exact sound back from, um, you know, other different pedals and stuff like that. So I went out on eBay and found a couple of these exact ADA MP1 preamps that was used on that sound. So when you see us live, it's the actual real sound. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. I'm glad I, I'm glad I threw that in there then because that's some, that's some really cool. Uh, I'll tell you one more one more fun fact about it, that yeah. the the patch that I used was was actually called Alice, and it would because it sounded like Alice in Chains 
their man in the box tone. So that oh. tone that I use on down was kind of an Alice in Chains inspired tone. And I got a chance to hang out with Jerry Cantrell and tell him about that. He was like, that's so cool. Oh, that is cool. I can see that. I can make that connection now because I, I know it's, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Well, I appreciate you, you sharing all this info. And um, I really appreciate you taking some time before getting together with the, with the fellas today to, to chat with me and Artist Waves. I always, man, I always look forward to talking with you. And then we talk and it's even more enlightening and more um, just a better experience than I would have ever imagined too. So you guys and your whole crew are just such good people and always been so, uh, so supportive and, and it's been awesome always collaborating with you. I can't thank you all enough, man. Every time I think we've, we've done it all, we just continue to find something else. And uh, it's, it's reasons 311 and, and, you know, mindsets like you have are the reasons why people and artist waves and platforms like mine get to even exist. Um, it's capturing the ripple effect of the most positive energy. And um, I just want to say thanks, man. It's always a blast. Well, thank you, too. You've been a, a long time supporter and collaborator. So thank you for the support. And, and also everybody watching out there, thanks for supporting the dream that is 311. Right on. Well, Unity, uh, it continues. And I look forward to seeing you guys. Uh, I'm on the East Coast. So uh, we'll, um, we'll meet somewhere in the middle via the the internet airwaves and uh, I'll, I can't guarantee my windows in my house are going to survive the next three live streams, but who cares? <laughs> there you go. Turn it up. Right on. Well, thank you, Nick. Uh, it's been a blast and uh, I really appreciate it. And I'll, uh, yeah, I'll see you Wednesday. Sounds good. Talk to you again. Bye. Take care. All right. Nick Haxon from 311. Man, I always love talking with Nick. That went too quickly, even though we went for 30, 35 minutes. Um, I thank you all for participating in the comments and the questions and for tuning in. Artist Waves, down with the unity. 311, always down with the unity. And, uh, you know, this is an interesting, interesting week. And, and I'm so grateful to, to Nick and, and people like 311 in his camp that are always so, uh, so open and share their mu music and their positive energy and their positive vibes. So gracious. Um, so let's continue this, this happy, positive wave. Um, just let me shout out some streams. We talked a lot about, excuse me, some, some uh, details. We talked about the live streams. We talked a lot about um, Wednesday, which is music in its entirety, and you can buy your ticket or secure your spot through 311streamsystem.com. I think you can pretty much do it right up until um, the day of or the day, you know, a couple hours before. So 311streamsystem.com, you can buy a bundle of all three shows, November, December, January together, or you can do them individually. I think there's also going to be some exclusive merch and posters or something. Um, that you can get through there. And then obviously they have the, the drive-in shows if you are lucky enough to live by Ventura or in Arizona. I believe it's in somewhere around Phoenix or something like that um, also this month. So 311 Camp always, always uh, out there for us. Stay positive and love your life. In the words of Nick Hexum, thank you all for checking this out. I am Jeff Gore. This is Artist Waves. And we'll be back later this week with another live stream, another live show, either either end of the week or, or early um, early next week. So check it out, artistspace.com and all of our socials for more info. Hey, thank you. Uh, 311 Penny Lane, Phoenix Adventure, right on. Okay. Thanks for the positive comments. I'll see you guys Wednesday, man. I'll see you Wednesday through, through the world of the internet with, uh, we'll all be inside the hive. Sounds good. Sightable crew, take care of yourself and someone else, right on. Well said. All right, bye.